Good evening and welcome to Conservation Conversations presented by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. My name is Kevin Kelly and I'm joined again tonight by the co-host Gabe Jenkins. Gabe, it's good to see you again. How are you? Good, Kevin. Good to see you as well. Um, nice to be on here this evening. Looking forward to our conversation tonight. Absolutely. I want to thank everybody who's joined us tonight as well. Yep. Um, so right before we came on, I took a little peek outside the window here and there's a little bit of daylight left. Um, so that time change in the warmer weather, uh, it's really welcome for anglers and it's kicked in that urge to get out and go fishing for sure. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, right Gabe? Right, right. I'm really looking forward to tonight. You know, we've talked a lot about fishing, kind of leading up to stuff. The season is here. It's warm. It feels mm -hmm. like spring. All the fun stuff is getting ready to happen. We're here. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from our folks tonight and really just kind of picking their brain and talking fishing and where this might go with us. Absolutely. And uh, for tonight's conversation, we have a fisheries biologist and the associate editor of Kentucky Field who is uh, making his uh, second straight appearance on <laughs> our show, uh, Lee, uh, Lee McClellan and Jeff Ross. There they are. All right. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, we're looking forward to really just kind of picking your brain and your expertise and really highlighting all the different efforts the department does and resources we have available. Um, so Lee, like Kevin said, we, we had you on last week. Uh, thanks for being willing to give up your Thursday again and talk fishing. I know you love to talk fishing. So just kind of for our folks who have not watched this before, give us a little bit of bio. I know they know your name and some of the things you do, but just tell us a little about a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm associate editor of our magazine, Kentucky Field. I've been with the department now going on 21 years. And um, my favorite thing in the world is to float a stream and catch smallmouth bass out of my kayak. And, but I love fishing of, of all kinds all across the state. Very blessed to do the job that I do. Excellent. Excellent. So Jeff will be our, our newcomer for the night. So Jeff, you're the assistant director in the fisheries division. Um, so you're a very integral part in the leadership and, and the, the kind of the steering of the fisheries division. So just kind of give us a little bit of your background and some of the things you enjoy doing. Yeah, I've uh, started out as a research biologist, black bass research biologist and uh, lakes fisheries biologist. And I started, but apparently Lee and I started pretty close together because I think I'm going in my 21st year as well. So uh, I moved up to assistant director and now I essentially supervise the seven fishery districts across the state. And those are the guys that the biologists and gals that go out and sample the fish populations, make regulation determinations and, and do all the hard work while I sit behind a desk. Right, right. <laughs> well, one thing that I forgot to say was, um, you know, in tonight's conversation, we will be taking questions. So if for our watchers, just go ahead and type your question into the chat function uh, there on your page. And then towards the end, we'll try to make sure we allow some time to answer those. You know, as we talk back and forth, a lot of times we'll answer those questions, but by all means, try to type that in and we'll try to do the best we can to answer them tonight. I think uh, while, we, while we've got Jeff on here and we'll probably bring, we'll, we'll bring, not probably, we will bring you back, Lee. <laughs> so um, we look forward to that, but um, I'm going to reach back here and grab something. I would show, I had, a, I had another copy of this, but it's all marked up because I use it <laughs> so much. But we're gonna be talking about um, the fishing forecast. Um, it, you know, it pops up on the, on the department's website every January. And Jeff, you play an integral role in helping develop this uh, for use by the public. And it's a great resource. So we're gonna be, we'd love to learn more about it, how it's put together and just what kind of information is, is in here. So yeah, go for it. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not going to take all the credit for this. The fishing forecast has been around for a while and it started out, uh, Jim Axon, who was a longtime biologist with us and assistant director as well. Uh, he started that up and really, you know, started the fundamentals of it. I've updated it a little bit since then, but I've tasked with making sure that thing does not go away or Jim will show up on my doorstep. <laughs> um, so yeah, it comes out every year and it's a, essentially a, an assortment of lakes across the state. They're usually the ones that the biologists have sampled during the year. So 
for people that are looking at it, most of the lakes you'll see every year that are in there, but there are a few that will drift in and out depending on whether we sampled them or not that year. We've got some smaller lakes that we only sample once every two or three years. So sometimes you may not see those lakes in there every year. So it's a, it's based on several things. The district biologists go out and they do their sampling, whether it's electrofishing or netting. Um, they do electrofishing in the spring and the fall, netting in the fall. Um, sample all the different fish populations. And they've been doing this since the beginning of time. So we have trend data on a lot of things, the length of fish, the weights, the growth, uh, how good the year classes are. So we can track that through time. And so the biologists use that information. They also use information from our creel surveys. And a lot of anglers may have seen our creel boats out on the lake and they go around and get angler uh, opinions, they get catch data, how many anglers are on the lake, how many fish they're keeping. And so we take that information, combine it with their sampling data. And then our biologists are all anglers as well. So they have their favorite lakes and they got a lot of, you know, background information on them. So they take that as well and they use the trends and kind of predict how the next year is going to go. And that's kind of how the, the forecast is set up. And, and if a lake moves from fair to good, then, you know, they're seeing a change and they expect anglers to see the change as well. So, so Jeff, just uh, for our watchers, I just typed in the link address on, on where you can get that in the chat function. Um, I'll share, share the screen to where everybody can see that while we're talking. If you don't mind, just kind of, we'll walk through some of that and yep. um, if you kind of explain how that process works and what, what it means. Okay. Let's see here. We should be able to see that. There you go. Forecast now. Okay. Yeah. So that's the front page and gives you the year. We try to pick out a new picture every year that that's uh, looks pretty nice. And that's that was one heck of a hybrid there. So that came out of the Ohio River. Um, so then if you get to the next page, you'll get some of the basic information, the new and expanding fisheries are fisheries that we've either started up new or there's been some changes. So this year it's mainly been some trout stockings that have been added. The Robert J. Barth Lake is a new Finns Lake. Wolf Creek and Martin County is a new trout stream. Uh, we changed up some stuff at Chimney Top and then there's some uh, blue catfish stocking going on in the Kentucky River. So those are the new things. The new up and comers, I won't go through all these, but those are essentially the lakes that have transitioned from like fair to good or fair to excellent or good to excellent. They've, they've moved up into the good or excellent category. So those are ones that you may not have paid a lot of attention to in the past or in the you know recent past, but you might want to go back and check them out. And then uh, let's see what else is on there. I think the bottom part just talks about the fishing forecast cheat sheet. And if you go to the next page and the contributors are all of our biologists. So I do want to give them credit for, you know, they're the ones that really put this together. I just kind of put all the information together. Uh, so, so before the, the cheat sheet, you have essentially a summary that goes through the late winter, early spring options and some of the better lakes. So this would be a really good page to look at right now for anglers because it's going to cover this time period on different species. And it'll, it covers, you know, the black bass species, it covers crappie, white bass, walleye, sauger, all kinds of stuff, trout. So you can read through that and get a general idea of what, you know, what's going on right now. The cheat sheet, I think, is one of the most important things. So once we get past the cheat sheet, there's a whole bunch of pages that list all the lakes individually and what species they're doing well and give them each a ranking. But if you don't want to read through the whole thing and you either know the lake you want to fish or the species you want to fish for, the cheat sheet, each check mark represents a lake that's either good or excellent. So this will keep you from not, you know, heading out to a lake that's got a poor bluegill fishery. You can look up bluegill and I'd go to one of those lakes if you can that has a check mark by it because that's going to have a little bit better fishery at this time. Right. And then so that's after the, that, we can just go to the first page because the rest of them are are similar. Um, you'll have to go past the uh, two pages of the cheat sheet. So there's more species on the second page if you don't see the species that you're looking for. 
and then you get into the lake. So there's AJ Jolly Lake up in Campbell County, and it'll list each species, its rating, its forecast, and then a little bit of uh, information on some of the times they'll list ways to fish for them. Sometimes they'll admit, mention how, you know, why is it an excellent population based on size and numbers. If you go to Barkley Lake, it, you know, you'll see some examples of, of how to fish for them. I know those are in there. So uh, for each of those. So you really, this it's a great thing for, you know, new anglers and, you know, long time anglers that may want to try a different lake or something. They can get through there and say, hey, that sounds pretty interesting. Let's go over there. So that's, that's the breakdown of it. And uh, really you just need to decide, you know, start with a species you want or where you think you might want to go fishing and look up and it'll give you a really good idea of what to focus on. One, one handy thing, you know, when you, when you look through this is that it not only tells you what the forecast is, but you also know, you know, special regulations that are in place and the, the, bio, the district biologists have provided, you know, location information, um, but also some tips about techniques too. And that makes this, you know, if you're a beginner, you, use, you can use this and have an idea, okay, here's what I'm, I, I need to take along with me. And uh, right. that's really handy. I mean, yeah, the, you know, the tips are probably more general. If you're a long time bass angler, you'll know a lot of other little intricate things you need to be doing, but the, the, those basic tips will, will get you on the fish and, you, and you'll catch them with those tips. And there's some fish stocking information in here too. So if yes. a lake was stocked the previous year, that's in there. Right. Yeah. And so this, just to clarify, this, this document basically covers the lakes that we manage. It doesn't really get into any of the stream fisheries or river fisheries for the most part. It's just, for the most part, stream fishing. Or I'm sorry, lake fish. Right. There are a couple of streams like Elkhorn Creek and, and uh, Barren, Barren River, Green River. Some of those are in there, but the majority of streams are not. And we've got a, a page that deals with streams completely separate on our web page. Uh, and then like the Finns Lakes, those are not in there. And we have a separate Finns page that, you know, if you're interested in those, you can go there as well. Okay, we'll come back to fins here in a second, but yep. I kind of would like to just reiterate, I shared that link, um, but you know, one thing I'll mention, you know, if for our viewers, if you've been on our website before, you're going to notice a new look and feel on our page. So uh, in the last week, the agent, we, we as the agency have adopted a new website. So all the same content is there. It just looks very different. And if, if you don't mind, just I was going to share my screen and show the page and then show how you could navigate to that uh, fishing forecast. Of course, you can go to our website at fw.ky.gov and search fishing forecast, or I thought I would just pull that up and navigate there um, to show everybody exactly how it is. And it's super simple. So like I said, our website is fw.ky.gov. This is our new main landing page right here. At the very top, you can click fishing and actually, Gabe, before you go there, before anybody goes there, you need to go over to the right. Oh, it's on every page. So that's good. The buyer license is up there and the new licenses are, you know, are up, up and running. So if you don't have your new license for this year, make sure you click that orange button up there. Yep. Yep. Uh, you can also go to the yes. stores and get them as well. But yeah, you click the fishing link and then you will scroll down. And this is our main fishing page. So. Uh, if you go down a little bit more, and I'll kind of tie it into the fishing forecast, we can jump up to recreational fishing in a second, but you go down one more level there, this find a place to fish is, is really important. So you've used the fishing forecast and you know where you want to go. Maybe you've never been there before. You can look up the, the water body, or if you just want to pick a county or a type of water body, uh, you can put them in there. And it'll actually bring up that, you know, all the lakes that fit your criteria. When you click on the lake, it'll bring up all the species that are in it, the regulations for all the species, the fishing forecast will be linked right into it. Uh, if we've got habitat in there, it'll have a page that go there. Uh, it'll list every access point. And uh, when you click on those, it'll give you a Google link, you know, a Google Maps link to take you right to the, to the ramp. 
give us some information on the ramp. So, you know, Anderson County, if you wanted to go to Taylorsville or Beaver Lake, any, you know, any of those, you click on that. And there's, you know, there's all your species. And there's right on the top there is the fish attractors and they're all shown on Google Maps and they've got, you know, coordinates listed with them. You got a, uh, actually we do some, uh, that largemouth bass fishing quality assessment might be a little more advanced for the newer fishermen, but that kind of gives an idea of how the population's doing. And then down below, it'll give you all the access sites for that lake. And if you click on one, which you can or can, it doesn't really matter. Um, it will then bring up, you know, the ramp type and there's a Google maps link there at the top. You click on that and it'll actually put you right, you know, give you a Google maps with directions on how to get there. So it's really neat. It tells you how, you know, how much parking there is. So this is like a one-stop shop to get you to the lake and, uh, you know, get you out on the water. It's really, it's really great. And it's a great way to search around just to find lakes that you want to try out as well. You know, I think for a lot of folks, they don't really realize that resource is available online. I know I didn't when we first started planning this and I'm, I'm a department employee that you have right. that much resources. You can click and find out all the information about the ramps and the, the directions, the, the, the slot limits, you know, recommendations on the fisheries and what type are good. So, you know, for folks who are new or you're just looking for someplace to try, it's, it's a fantastic way to look at it and see our opinions, see what we're seeing and recommendations. And really, um, outside of that main page, the, the big one for the anglers, and, and they can search around, but it's uh, right on the main page is a recreational fishing tab or button. If you click on that, that's pretty much going to give you everything else you need, stocking information, the fishing forecast is on there, the fins lakes are on there. So that's, that's your biggest button after you're on the main page, because it will... It'll give you basic fishing information. Uh, yeah, so down, down below you get, there's your rules and regulations, all kinds of basic fishing information, uh, so, some more information on where to fish, like Blue Water Trails, which Lee put together, is a lot of floating information for taking a kayak or canoe out. Uh, or trout streams, fish, fish ID, if people aren't sure, you know, want to be safe on the water and know what they're catching and what the limits are. And even down below that, I think there is our stocking information. And you got general stocking, which has maps, which are really cool. You can get a whole map of Kentucky and it shows you every place we stocked in those years and what we stocked. And then below that's trout stocking and fin stocking. So Pretty much everything else you need is on this page. Uh, if you do need to get some boating information, you're fishing from a boat, our main fish and wildlife page has a, has a boating link and that's where you go for that type of stuff. So it's much it's much easier to navigate now if you ask me and it, and it looks yep. really nice. One of, one of the links there was, was uh, lakes with fish attractors. Yep. So anglers can really, and there have been some improvements uh, to this uh, here recently, but I believe it's 37 lakes across the state where Fish and Wildlife has placed um, fish attractors, habitat structures, those sorts of things. You know, so like every December and January, the department sets up the Christmas tree uh, collection um, sites. And I think this past winter, um, you know, I'd love to see, you know, if any of our viewers tonight, you know, comment you know, if you dropped a tree off for, for you know, recycling in, in, into uh, fish habitat, but um, we collected over 5,000 Christmas trees at um, uh, drop-off sites uh, this past year. Yeah. And, and uh, how are those yeah. used, Jeff? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. So that GPX file download, that's something that uh, anglers with depth finders are going to be real happy about. It's something they've asked for. It's, it's just uh, data that you can bring into your depth finder a lot easier than the way we had it before so you can bring that stuff right into your depth finder and heck every every place we put habitat for the most part is will be sh shown on your sonar or whatever whatever else you got side scan 
Click on Barren River, Gabe. Barren, <laughs> Barren River Lake. So, Jeff, this is a lake where the department has done a lot of habitat work and continues. Yes. So, right? Yeah, we've had uh, some major habitat projects, and uh, they kind of started out at Cave Run, moved to Car Creek, and now, now we're at Barron. And, and we're in the, I think, the third year, uh, and they got several more years to go. So they're focusing on different areas, but, man, there's a lot of new and great habitat out there and the anglers are catching fish off them. I mean they're catching fish off them two days after we put them out there so you know uh, one thing that comes to my mind that I see right off the top is that you have images for the different types of structure that you've put out so whether it's a brush pile or trees or a, or a, a plastic fish attractant I'm sure you got a technical word for it but some sort of <laughs> fish attractant um, you know it shows what they are and what they look like as well. I think if I think if you click on one, I think it'll actually bring up a little more information. But it may I may be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. There uh, we go. But it does give you some of the GPS type stuff if you just wanted to put that in individually or something like that. Yeah. So if you can see there on the right or on the on the left, my left at least, this is a plastic tree. It's got the GPS location um, of that of that attractant as well, and you can just like you said, click on them and it pulls up different ones. Yeah, it'll do it for each one. Now, if you wanted to download your depth finder, you definitely would want to do it from the previous page because that's like one big file that you can essentially upload instead of doing them individually. But okay. it's, uh, yeah, that's, this is pretty neat, this whole thing. And we can't hide any habitat. Everybody knows where it's at. All right. So one thing that you, you touched on, Jeff, and I'd like to kind of go back to it is our fins lake. Fins lake. So, you know, we have a variety of anglers with different expertise from all over the state. Um, so kind of give us a, a 30,000 foot view of what the fins program is and uh, what that looks like, if you don't mind. Yeah, the fins program kind of fits definitely new, well, all anglers, but for new anglers, it's a great place to start. They're lakes that are closer to bigger communities uh we stock them a lot like a ton so you're going to probably catch something if you go there they have really good amenities a lot of restrooms and park benches and a lot of them are at city county lakes and parks or uh, parks and other things uh i think we have 44 of them but robert j barth in campbell county is the new one that may make 45 so most likely there's something close to you it works great for if you're in a situation like I am with kids and your time's really tight with doing other things. A lot of times we may only have an hour or two. Usually there's somewhere like for me, the sportsman's lakes, I can run over there in 15 minutes and fish for an hour and a half, two hours and come back. So you don't have to have a boat or anything else. It's uh, it's great. And basic fishing, bait fishing or just worms or, you know, not anything fancy will get you fish. We stock catfish and trout in them at a pretty high rate. Trout are fall and spring and winter. I, I think catfish and trout, if I'm not mistaken, have already been stocked this month. That, yes. Yeah. Uh, they just, yeah, they should have done them. And actually, you know, the trout stocking schedule and that catfish stocking schedule will give you the exact dates. Um, if you want to know what Lake is in a county, that interactive map and individual maps list there will give you all the lakes. They do all have the same regulations, so that's easy to follow. One thing people need to remember with the trout in there, if they're gonna keep a trout, they need a trout stamp. You can catch them and let them go without a stamp, but if you wanna keep them, you need a trout stamp. But it's, no, so yeah, that's a great program. It's probably one of our most popular programs. You know, so the main takeaway is that most of these are in more of your urban areas yep. um, and they're, you know, a lot of think people kind of overlook them thinking that's just a small pond or small lake. There's not a great fishery there, but in all reality, there is. We are very aggressive in the, in the stocking programs. And I mean, it's a great resource for people, like you said, that are close, want to run over for an afternoon. I know a couple of weeks ago, 
my son and I went to the local Fins Lake and we caught a whole mess of trout and he had an absolute blast. Like he's still asking, when we go go catch some more trout, dad. I'm like, man, right. I'd love to. I had a phenomenal time and there were 30 over 30 other people with me that day that were there fishing at the pond and had an absolute blast. Yeah. They're great. One of the things that, I mean, for kids, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of room to roam <laughs> and uh, yeah. you know, that's that, you know, if you're a parent with young kids, um, you know, that they want to move around and they want to explore and, uh, these fins lakes allow for that. Um, you know, everyone that I've ever been to, you know, my kids have probably done a lap or two around the lake <laughs> and, yeah, uh, just, to, sure. just to see, just to see what was out there. Uh, yeah. And for anglers with young kids, you know, that's a good point. Just, you know, it can get frustrating when your kid's not paying attention to fishing, but I learned that if you let them run around, they'll come back and then they'll be, you know, they'll be interested at some point, but a lot of times, you know, the geese are sitting there staring at them and they're just, you know, they'd rather go up there and try to catch one of those, you know, so don't, you know, don't panic if your kids aren't paying attention to fishing hundred percent when they're young. So one thing that I wanted to point out um, on a couple things, you know, we have like going back to it, we have a variety of different watchers, some are experienced and some are not. For our new anglers, uh, a couple different things that we have on our, our website that I'd like to uh, to share real quick is we have a, a gear up and get out option um, that where it basically has a checklist of all the different supplies that we would recommend or things that you can consider um, that you might need to go fishing. So if you're a little unsure on how to tackle it, besides a rod and a reel and a license, what else do you need? So that that is there on our page. And then I also wanted to share um, another page that we have that's, that's titled uh, Learn to Fish. So um, this is something new that our aquatic ed folks have put together and basically kind of a step-by-step -step process that you might need uh, learning how to fish, um, kind of the, the basic angling to get you involved, uh, the basics and kind of a one, two, three highlight uh, of where to go, kind of a summary of all the different things that we talked about um, that's, that's on our website as well. It talks about the FINS program, some videos that go with it, skills. Also, if you're new, kind of how to tie knot, that can be kind of challenging if you're not uh, skilled in that. So some basics there from some of our folks at Kentucky Field. So um, some great resources there. And uh, we're expanding upon this, even how to clean your first fish. So lots of good information there on, our, on that site. All right. So anything else you'd kind of like to tell everybody? We, we cover everything, Jeff, what's available online, anything we're missing and highlight for, for our watchers tonight? Uh, I think we've got most of it. There's a lot more stuff on our website that I didn't mention and I'm probably forgetting <laughs> half of it. I know, I know I got to, you know, the critical things that you'll need, but you, there's a lot of interesting things on our site. I mean, if you have interest on what's going on with Asian carp and, or, you know, have concerns about that. We've got a whole page for that. So, you know, there's a lot more information than just the fishing information. Um, and there's more fishing information than I got to as well. So nice. Uh, okay. it, you could spend a long time on our site and you know learn a lot. In fact, when you just brought up that last page there, I just, I didn't realize that half that stuff was there. So I just learned something. <laughs> Well, it's fresh off the press. How about that? We just yep. uh, finished a lot of that up and got that up and going. So I had to had to give a plug to our aquatic education guys. On yeah, that was great. To put there. So, well, Jeff, thank you. Um, yep. We'll uh, kind of let you go for right now. We'll plan on bringing you back for the question and answer, and uh, we'll grab Lee if he's there for with us. All right, thanks, you guys. Thanks, thanks, guys. Jeff. Lee, welcome back, sir. All right. So. Jeff has given us a fantastic overview of all the different stuff we have on our website and resources that, that all everybody has at their fingertips. Um, let's just kind of kick some things off with you and some of the things that you kind of like to highlight. Uh, some of your recommendations, maybe some some demonstrations on some lure riggings, a little, little more advanced stuff. Um, just kind of open it up to you for a little bit. Well, you know, I just learned a few things watching Jeff's demonstration on the new website that I didn't know about. Good. Um, our website's fantastic. I use it every day. 
in the performance of my job. So uh, the more people get familiar with it and use it, the, the better their fishing is going to be. Um, one of the things we talked about was we had over 80,000 new anglers last year come into the fold. And one of the things that, that um, I think sometimes we're guilty of is we talk a little bit too much inside baseball and assume people know some of the basics when they may not. So a couple of the things I wanted to talk about was first, some of the basic lure styles, and then go over a few of the, the riggings, mainly the soft plastic baits on how to rig them. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the places I've been where the fish are, are rated excellent in this year's fishing forecast. But I'm gonna turn my, my camera down. I actually use a little bit of white here today. So uh, one of the things you all talked about earlier was catching trout in a fins lake and this little dude here is an inline spinner. And that is a deadly, that's one of the best lures you could give a kid and say, here, catch a fish in a farm pond, in a fins lake, trout eat them, bluegill eat them, stream smallmouth eat them, white bass eat them, hybrid striped bass eat them, largemouth eat them. And, and you can go from this size up to, you know, this teeny weeny up, they get huge, even all the way up to muskie. You can catch muskie on a bigger inline spinner. So yeah, this I'm is gonna, a lot of people I'm gonna, a rooster tail. And uh, you can see it has a little spinner. And you cast it out, you let it sink, you reel it in. Simple. Um, this is a small one, but this is known as a crankbait. Hopefully I won't hook myself. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a smaller version of, uh, that imitates a crayfish. This is a, a rebel uh, deep wee. This is fantastic for stream trout. It's also great for stream smallmouths, uh, farm pond largemouths. They get into bigger versions where you can fish them in reservoirs and catch all the black bass you want. You can catch even walleye, anything that, that eats crayfish will eat one of these. Again, cast it out. You want this to kind of bang on the bottom. Every once in a while, you can give it a little bit of a jerk, give it some erratic uh, action. Deadly, deadly lure. This is what a lot of people just simply call a Rapala. It's a floating diving minnow. And um, stream smallmouth love them. Uh, farm uh, largemouth love them, farm pond largemouth. Um, you can catch big largemouth in reservoirs on bigger versions. But basically, it floats. And when you retrieve it, it dives just a little bit. That's why it's called a floating diving lure. And you know some of them get up to here in three hooks. Um, this particular one, I caught a really fat brown trout in the Cumberland River on it one night uh, and then lost a huge fish that I never identified that tail walked uh, on me. It was about uh, five o'clock in the morning, so I didn't know what it was. <laughs> this is a really, this color, particular color is good for brown trout, believe it or not. You can also catch string smallmouth on these. Again, a floating diving lure. And this is a smaller version, but I grabbed my trout box, so on the way out. This is what is known as a suspending jerkbait. Now, some of them are big with a much bigger uh, bill on them, but this lure dives, and then it just sits there, and you jerk it, and it does like that. It looks like a shad or a bait fish that's distressed. So this is a killer for Cumberland River rainbows and brown trout. This is a Yozuri's pins minnow. Anybody that trout fishes uh, tailwaters are, are familiar with that move. But it'll catch stream smallmouth, it'll catch largemouth in lakes. Uh, suspending jerk baits are a deadly bait, especially in spring. Right now is a great time to throw a suspending jerk bait. So a lot of people get confused about uh, things. This is a worm that Kevin turned me on to. This is called a Ned Rig. This is a little bitty mushroom hook, okay? This one is one-tenth ounce, and you rig it. This is a known as a Z-Man Finesse TRD, but there's a lot of them on the market now called basically Ned Rig Burbs. And you just thread it on, and then let the hook pop out, trying to get it to where you can see it better. And then just slide it up there simple. Um, it's better to have a little bit less worm on there than too much and the worm is looking like that. You don't want that nor you don't want enough and it looks like that. You want it straight and pretty. Now this is a good bird. This is a good head 
to use in lakes like Lake Cumberland, Laurel, Dale, lakes that don't have a lot of woody cover. If you throw this in like say Elkhorn Creek, you're gonna spend 80% of your day getting this thing unhooked from the bottom. So there's also- You're gonna be, you're gonna be a little lighter in the wallet too. <laughs> Pardon? You're gonna be a little lighter in That's, the wallet. I'm you are gonna be very light of experience wallet. doing that. <laughs> this is a new style head. This is kind of a version of what Kevin and I have thrown for years known as a slider head. It's a bullet shaped head, but it's designed to be weedless. You can throw this in the weeds and a little bit more cover than you can that mushroom style head. Again, you just feed, I'm trying to get it to where you can see it. Feed a little bit on, okay, and then pop it free. See? A lot of people want to feed too much on. Then this one is a one sixth. And with this style of, of plastic, it doesn't break. So you slide it over that thingy. I'm trying not to be too confusing. Slide it over the thingy and then pop it like that. See how it's all pretty and straight? It's hanging like that. Then a lot of people don't do this. Grab the worm, make a little belly in it like that, and then pull it straight down so your worm is straight and pretty like that. You don't want it all looking like that or looking like that. There's no bait fish that swims that looks like that. So you want your worm straight and pretty. You can throw this in weeds and in woody cover and you won't say bye bye to. That is the Ned Rig. This color is black. And if I had one color to throw for black bass, it would be black. For large mouth, small mouth, or spotted bass, black. If I only had one color to throw, I would throw black. Okay. Um, this is a bass jig. This one is a football head. If you look at, if you can see the shape, I'm trying to see it better. It's shaped like a football. It's better for rocky. Uh, this is a really good uh, bait to throw in a rocky environment. This is a pocket crawl chunk. And this is a half ounce. This is what you would use in lakes for large mouths. Or you could throw it in Cumberland for some really big small mouths. But generally, for small mouth bass, you'd like to throw something a little bit smaller. So this is a football head, half ounce bass jig. These imitate crayfish. This is probably the most versatile bass lure you can throw. You can swim it just above the bottom. You can bang it on the bottom. You can just let it sit there. It's a fantastic bait for largemouth, big smallmouths, and big spotted bass. But mainly, that's a largemouth lure. Now, this next one, I should open this, is one that uh, is called a wacky rig. And this is a wacky rig head. This one's weighted, some of them aren't. And all you do with the wacky rig, this worm is beat up because of all the bass I caught from uh, the 15 acre lake at Kentucky River WMA last June. So this one's torn up. I wanted to use a good season worm. See, it does like that. See the hook in the middle? The reason it's called a wacky rig is some guys were down in Texas, I think it was on Lake Fork, and they didn't know any better and they just took a hook and stuck it in the middle of the worm. And uh, people laughed at them until they opened their live well and there were giant bass in there. Because when this falls, it does like this through the water column. See how it's doing like that? Drives them crazy. It quivers when there's water pressure against it. But it drives bass nuts. But they called it the wacky rig. People laughed at them until they saw, I think they were using cream scoundrel worms. And people laughed until they saw they had giant small or large mouths. Now people throw the wacky rig all the time. Um, the next lure that's very versatile, we caught hybrid striped bass. In fact, the one that's on the fishing forecast, that picture, I took that picture, thank you, of that monster <laughs> hybrid that was out of the Ohio River that we caught you, on a swim bait. You thank took you, it, but you, you didn't catch it, right? Yeah, no, I did not. I, where's I yours at, Lee? Lee? I want to see that Chase picture. Winninger caught that. No, I can't remember <laughs> Paul or Chase caught that. Paul might have caught that one. I can't remember. But this is called a swim bait. Very popular bait right now. You can catch white bass, hybrid striped bass, smallmouth bass, stream smallmouth bass, largemouth bass in ponds, largemouth bass in lakes, spotted bass. And walleye will strike them. This isn't the best looking rigging in the world, but this imitates a shad that swims. Usually they're rigged with a hook that's exposed. You can use um, a different style of hook where you can um, not rig it hook exposed. Most of the time you rig a swim bait, 
hook exposed. But you can use a, a hook very similar to this one right here. See how that's rigged? You can use a similar style bullet head and rig, rig this uh, weedless. But most of the time you rig it hook exposed. It's an extremely versatile bait and you can catch lots of stuff on it. So Lee, and, I think a lot, I was gonna say, most of the stuff that you've shown us tonight, these are all common baits. Like you're yes. any, any type of sporting goods store or place that you would buy uh, outdoor equipment are gonna have nearly everything that you've shown. And you know, they're also pretty affordable. The, those wacky worms and the, and the swim baits, those are an affordable thing to pick up, but they're also very, uh, very good baits to use uh, even though they're cheap, right? Oh yeah, this 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 bag of worms here. I think these are around three dollars, three to four dollars a bag, for for ten. No, actually, no, for twenty. <laughs> this is known as a shaky head. This is a very popular thing. It's hard to see on the camera, but I need to bring it up. If you look, there's a little bitty spring and spear system to rig it with, and you you typically use these with longer straight tail worms and all you do is spin it just spin it on this little hook or this little uh, uh little assembly here sorry until it's flush with the head see it's flush then again do your pretty trick grab the worm bend it a little bit like that to make it pretty this one's a real oily and there Straight and pretty, except this worm's got a little bend and it's been in the bag a long time. Deadly, deadly for largemouth bass. This is my Kentucky Lake killer. Uh, if I only have one thing to throw at Kentucky Lake, it'd be a shaky head number two big Carolina rig for me. The jig works great too, but Kentucky Lake killer. Great on medium to small lakes for largemouths. Small mouths will strike shorter versions of it as will spotted bass, but this is typically uh, the size for a largemouth. Some people use them up to this big. Some people put lizards on this. There's a whole lot of different styles of worms you put on a shaky head, but they work great. And all you do is throw them out, let them sink to the bottom and reel up tight and shake your rod tip and let it sit. Keep Lee, it let's line, reel it in five feet, repeat all the way back to the boat. Sometimes okay. you can swim them with a steady retrieve just above the bottom, but mainly these are a bottom designed See, the head is, is flat and conical, designed to stand up like this. They see that quivering like that, and whoop, off to the races. <laughs> so those are some of your basic lures. Um, you know, again, affordable. But a lot of people don't have that. You know, you, I Come fish with people, bit. and uh, they, they struggle. Sorry, I'll get this fixed. All right. They struggle like, I don't know how to rig that. And you're over there working with them all day. Um, hopefully this will get some people to go out and just practice your basic rigging techniques on how to get ready. Mainly these were, were bass lures as far as the soft plastic. That swim bait, I mean, we destroyed uh, hybrids on it. You can, catch, you can catch any predator fish on a swim bait. So. Um, Lee, you touched, on, you touched on a handful of lakes and, and where you use those types of lures. Yeah. I know you wanted to, to, you know, going back to the fishing forecast, um, there were some lakes that were rated excellent that you wanted to kind of highlight. Um, yes. You know, we'd love to hear, you know, what, what some of Lee McClellan's picks are for this year. Okay, well, so to speak. What, are, what are your sleepers? You know? Well, I, I did some, I, I kind of chose the ones tonight based on where I've been and did it with myself. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin and I went out and tried to catch red here. We caught a few on Kentucky Lake a couple of years ago. And uh, this is one of the little, Little lures, that might help. I'll bring it back a little bit. This is go. called a bluegill bug. You can buy them around, uh, they're available all over the Kentucky Lake, Lake Barkley region. And it's just a plastic little bug that you fish near the bottom for red ear sunfish. And if anybody's ever caught a red ear sunfish over 10 inches long, it is an absolute ball. Yep. The one thing about red ears, we have quite a few of our smaller lakes, Corinth, uh, Elmer Davis, even McNeely Lake in Jefferson County that have good populations of red ear sunfish. So you don't have to drive to Barkley in Kentucky to catch them, but, but Barkley in Kentucky, or if you want a trophy one, those are the best lakes in the state to go for. And the thing about 
red ears is they, they spawn deeper than bluegill and they like a gravel substrate. And you want this little daddy here, fish just above the bottom. A lot of people fish them on a slip bar. Like that. Some people fish them on a fixed bobber, the old, this is how I learned to bluegill fish, the old spring kind that you wrap around the slot and then pull the spring up and catch them that way. People tip these little things with, uh, with uh, mealworms. Some people tip them with red worms. Some people tip them with those imitations that are made by some of the companies that are made out of kind of a stinky dough type material. And this is another little dude here. These are called little bitty hair jigs. These are Gary Skidmore's. They're kind of famous. He's been dead a long time. And I, I gave away a bunch of these. And now I'm going, what were you thinking, you idiot? <laughs> because, I mean, I gave them away all the time on fishing trips. Here, man, try these. What was I thinking? Now I can't get them. These are called the, these are kind of famous for red ear. As you can see, that is a red ear sunfish on the package. These work fantastic. I've also caught white bass on them out of Salt River under a bobber. But you can also fish these, but you want, again, you want to be just above the bottom in a gravel substrate. And once you find those nests of the red ear in Lake Barkley or Kentucky or McNeely, fish there for a while because they usually spawn together. Okay, so let's let's transition from red ear to bluegill. Let's talk, talk smallmouth. Right. So give, right. give me a place that uh, you think would be fun to – Go try your hand at some small well, fish. You know, the, um, selfish plug. We Chad Miles and I did a, a nice float last fall on the uh, Kentucky Field Show. It's on our YouTube channel on fishing Green River. From the dam to Greensburg is the best water. And you know, we, we talked about if, if uh, maybe bring up the uh, Daily Lake report that we talked about because that that predicates everything on any kind of tailwater fishing in the Louisville district. I know Jeff. I know Jeff touched on this earlier uh, tonight, but Lee, you know, Lee has authored the Blue Water Trail series, and if you're a paddler, uh, you have to check those out. I mean, not only is Lee a tremendous writer, uh, historian, but he has just a, a gift of being able, to, like you're seeing tonight, he has a gift of being able to explain uh, in in easy terms. You know what you should use, what techniques, how fast you you know you reel, and and just all these things. You know what water flow you're looking for, um, and this may be an opportunity if we want to talk about the the lake report or um, mm -hmm. the USGS uh, you know water flow and just the how important that is. You know that that may be a little bit more advanced, but it's something as you kind of gain more experience as an angler that you know you definitely you know want to look at and pay attention to, right? Yep. Yeah. So I think for time's sake, let's we'll bypass the, the lake just report. Go to the, go to the Louisville district, the Corps of Engineers and type in daily lake report. You could type in daily lake report Louisville and Google and it'll come up. And what it shows is how much water is coming out of the dam for the Louisville lake, uh, the Louisville district lakes. Right. So okay. one of them is Green River. And, you know, like the other day, it was like 5000, which would mean you'd go from Green River Lake Dam to Mammoth Cave in about 20, 25 minutes. So you, <laughs> you, you don't want to try fishing. And really anything on above 300 CFS is not good for fishing. My ideal release level for Green River is 150 CFS. If you watch the show we did last fall, we floated that at the 54 cubic, CFS is cubic feet per second. We did it at that level, which is the base flow, the lowest it is. And we caught fish then, it, it's, it was good. Um, so, so I was going to say, let's let's hit one more. So tell me one that's a little more of a, a fins lake or a sleeper, some smaller places that you think might be a good place to go try out um, for, for fishing, for especially well, large well, There's mouth. two in Richmond, you know, we're Eastern grads. Um, right. And, you know, Lake Reba and Will Green are really good lakes if you want to try kayak fishing. They both rated excellent in this year's fishing forecast for large mouths. Now, the key to Lake Reba is there's a public park that surrounds a lot of it, is to paddle as far away from the park end as you can, and you'll get into better fishing. And one of the things you can do at Will Green is to throw one of these in brown and orange in coves and just let it sit on the bottom. And I caught a bunch of them in that cut, kind of the channel that's in the middle of the cove, in the mouth of the cove. Throw this and do nothing and just let it sit there. 
I won big fish in a local tournament there one night while eating a sandwich because I had a lure out on the bottom, a worm just like that was sitting there quivering. I wouldn't do anything. My pole was there. I was like, my line's going sideways. <laughs> Set nice. the hook, one big fish. So, <laughs> Lee, Lee, was uh, this a sandwich from the subway where you worked at? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no, that was well no, I was, That was one of my peanut butter and jelly, famous <laughs> peanut butter and apple jelly sandwiches that, that you, you've partaken with on several photo shoots. But, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but, but, you know, Will Green is a great lake. And both of these, again, uh, Will Green's idle speed only. Lake Reba's trolling motor only. So you don't have to worry about getting weight. That's very important if you're fishing a small lake with a kayak. You don't want big boat weights. Those can get kind of scary when you're not paying attention. So those will be two two excellent uh, choices, especially if you live in the Lexington area. You can be there in 25 minutes. Excellent. One one follow-up question. Where can people find information on uh, horsepower restrictions, on how many fish you can keep, um, what size fish, that type of thing? Are wonderful little thing called the it's amazing if you actually get one of these because they're free and carry it in your boat you'll know all kinds of stuff <laughs> um, but it's amazing how many people do not free put in your boat put in your glove box put in your tackle box and then you don't have to worry you have everything covered but in the boating section there's a that tells you all the horsepower restrictions on on particular lakes so you can get those, that, that fishing and boating guide at your local sporting goods store, just like we talked about the baits. The um, it's also available online on our website. We have a mobile version for it. I recommend you download, screenshot, do all of that for all the different places. And then one new thing for us as an agency is we actually have a, a Spanish translated version this year. So for our Spanish speaking folks, if you want a guide in your, in your language, you can get that now on our website. Um, it's available and, PDF and download. Leads to the Spanish version. Right there. Correct. Correct. So new resources out there for our different anglers that we're excited to uh, to uh, promote and tell more people about. So Lee, thank you. Um, thank you for your expertise and that demonstration, kind of giving us a, a different ideas and ways to rig baits uh, that you think is useful, and kind of giving some some sleeper some sleeper places, I guess you will, to to try and that are different that a lot of people might not have heard about. Um, so thank you. We'll bring um, Jeff back in with us, if you don't mind, and we'll try to answer some questions real quick. All right. Give me a second here. And I'll kind of start at the top. Um, we have one question, Jeff, this might be for you. Uh, an angler's asking, he's curious about the migration of smallmouth bass during the winter months. Do they remain in the creeks and the deeper holes and pools or they return to the main river? What do we know about about bass migration, smallmouth bass in the winter. Yeah, we did some tracking of smallmouth on Elkhorn Creek and you get a kind of a split. Some stay in the creek themselves and they'll settle down in those deeper holes. I think a lot of that has to do with their, you know, lower their metabolism in that cold water. So there's less flow if they can get down deep. But then some moved out to the Kentucky River for the winter and then came back into the creek and they may, you know, spend a lot of time out there, but they came back into the creek to spawn for sure. So, you know, they can do both. If you're, if they're staying in the creek, they will settle down in those deeper holes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so one thing we've, we've not hit on, but I know we've talked about it independently. Um, and, and, and we have a, a viewer that mentioned this, this summer in Kentucky and Tennessee and other states, we're going to experience a 17-year brood hatch of cicadas, you know, in the millions. So from what I remember, it's going to be in the kind of the southern part of the state. Lee, is this, I mean, you want to talk a little bit about that and what we know and what, what that might look like for our anglers? Well, I have a, a jitterbug that is a cicada color, so it may see some action. Um, two, last year, no, two years ago, I went on Cumberland River and with a, a good friend who hand tied a cicada. It was an annual cicada. And um, at the end of the day, we were catching them mainly on a dropper rig. But at the end of the day, these monster, fat rainbows and browns were just swimming right up under the boat. You could watch them and they're like, oh my God. They come up and just crush that cicada and pull it down. I mean, it give you a heart attack because you could see them coming from 10 feet away and they're like, oh my God, he's going to hit it. Boom! And then you're like, oh, 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 oh. It was awesome. So, 
um, if, if there, you know, the thing that my understanding is it's going to be in select, it's not going to be all over the state. It's right. going to be in selected areas. So those areas that have them, fish are going to eat them. That's for sure if they're near a stream. So, okay. so stock up now, you know, on, on cicada imitating lures, right? <laughs> All right, so we have another question. Uh, this is a little specific um, on AJ Jolly. Um, how are the sauger doing there? Uh, you know, I think we looked at that, but um, anything about in the future, what their productivity is like, uh, specifically on sauger and AJ Jolly? Um, we got saw guy in AJ okay. Jolly, so that's probably what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's a cross between a walleye and a sauger, and they don't reproduce in there. They're, you know, we stock them in. So they should be good. And speaking of walleye, I mean, walleye, saw guy, tomorrow somebody's supposed to be bringing in a saw guy, saw guy from Bullock Pen to our main offices that potentially could break the state record and be wow. over nine pounds. So we'll see. Nine pounds, nine but pounds. AJ Jolly's got saw guy in it as well. And we stock it just the same as some of our other lakes. So I think. You know, they should be should be good. Some of the lakes do better than others. Taylorsville is a great one for saw guy if people want to go out there and get them. Okay, um, thank you. The next question is: um, Do we list anywhere the different stockings other than trout or catfish? Uh, the only place, and we've talked about putting this out itself, but. If you go on our website under uh, fisheries management, you can find our annual sampling reports. Oh, you know what? They're not in the back of that. So that's a good point. If people are asking about it, we probably do need to get on the ball and get those out there. We can, we can do that. We have that information. We just don't have it out there. The, the best way to do it is if you go to our stocking site that we looked at earlier in those maps, if you're interested in a specific place, it will have all the species and numbers that we stock. But we'll try to get something up that has everything in one place. All right, this is uh, not a comment, but I think a, uh, a point of clarification, or not clarification, but a point to mention. So for our new anglers, um, we have a, a certificate that you can print and download, like My First Fish or My First Bass, uh, that if you wanted to uh, get for your kid. Um, we also have that on the hunting side of thing for you, my first harvest. Um, so that's a great certificate. I know I, I did one of those for my daughter uh, on her first year and she hangs it in her room. Very proud of that. So if you've got some kids and this is their first time to go fishing, get that nice picture with them and print off that certificate. I know, uh, I know it would mean a lot to them. Let's see here. A uh, lot, lot of discussion tonight. I appreciate all of our viewers and uh, asking the questions that they have. Um, we have uh, one about fly fishing. Um, any kind of, let's see here, keep the fly fisher, fishers in mind over uh, if, if there's a way to overhang branches and wider access on the water. So uh, somebody looking for some of those stream places where it might be uh, easier to fly fish um, and some of the streams that we manage. Well, um, it, it depends on the species they're looking for. The Cumberland River, of course, is plenty wide enough to fly fish. Um, if they're after small mouse, Green River, Elkhorn even, uh, Barren River below Barren River Lake Dam, all would be very good places to fly fish for smallmouth bass. So um, um, there's ample opportunity for that. Plus, uh, nothing's more fun than throwing a sponge spider and catching bluegill on a lake on a fly rod. That is absolute fun. Um, Harrington Lake is one of the best. I used to kill them on Harrington Hill. Uh, if you throw it right by those bluffs, pow, you'll, you'll catch bluegill all day long. It's, it's a ball. I used to do a float too. It was fun, fun, fun. So uh, there's plenty of places where it's wide enough and big enough to where you can, you can successfully fly. Okay. Well, gentlemen, I think that pretty much answers all of our questions. Um, any last things that you would like to, to hit on or discuss that you felt we didn't, didn't cover tonight? I got How one thing on, on Reba. I wanted to bring up for Reba and Lake Will or uh, Will Green, not Will Green. Um, what's McNeely in Louisville? 
those are two trial lights that we're putting in ADA accessible kayak launches and they are either done or just about to be done, but you can actually lift yourself in and roll yourself up off of it. And, and it's going to be great. So if people are looking for a place to be able to do that, uh, when he was, when he, when Lee was talking about Reba, it got me thinking about that. Okay. Those will be the first of their kind in the state, correct? Or at least that, that the department has installed. Yes. And I also learned that when you rig your Ned rig, you slide the worm over the thingy. I didn't know what that was called. That's an official term tonight, right? <laughs> that little thingy there. That's just on this particular hook stop. But that holds it on there. <laughs> and on the other side, they have a little thingy. It's hard to see, but there's a little barb there that holds your Ned rig on this guy. So, yes, the thingy is very important in Ned rig fishing. <laughs> Lee, any uh, closing thoughts from you tonight, sir? Well, it's killing me. I haven't fished uh, the Salt River yet, so hope to fix that soon. And I'm ready for this rain to end because I'm, I'm really jonesing bad to get on my kayak and get this small back. So yep. as soon as they get down a little bit more, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i be hit. You know, we're, since we're talking that, I did get a report today that I heard that the white bass are really running very well on no Lynn right now on the river. So for, if you're in that area or looking for the white bass run, check out No Lynn. I know uh, the Kentucky Field Crew has been there some, so it mm. sounds like that that fishery is on. We'll see what this rain and weather does here in the next 24 hours, but uh, some good opportunity there yeah. as well. Also, uh, you know, keep uh, if you're on Facebook, you know, make sure you uh, like and follow the Facebook page for the department. There's going to be more fishing forecast information and insiders look at the fishing forecast. So you may see uh, some information about Nolan uh, coming up pretty soon. Also, nice. we launched nice. the Spring Fishing Frenzy series on our website and on our Facebook page today. We have all the ones I did last year. This one was a uh, Chad Miles this week caught a two cast. He caught two small mouse that weighed about 10 pounds on Dale Holland. So, of course, I was madder than a wet hen that it wasn't me. <laughs> so, uh, well, go to the website look at spring fishing frenzy they'll be coming out every thursday probably till early summer so uh, a lot of pertinent a, information on how to catch fish how to waiting all kinds of stuff so i was going to say that's also a, a good plug for our kentucky field tv show that airs on ket on, on the weekends and also the kentucky field youtube channel so all the shows that they show on ket then follow up on youtube uh, great job at, at explaining different fisheries and techniques and what they're going for so if you're uh, learning and want to look for some new resources from the department, uh, Chad and company do a great job and encourage you to check out their YouTube page as well. So Jeff, Lee, thank you. We appreciate all that you do for the agency and the department. Thank you for your expertise and all that you do. Uh, it's great to have you on tonight. All right, thanks, I had fun. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks guys. So Kevin, you know, we've been talking fishing, fishing, fishing. It's picking up. We've already plugged a few things that that, uh, that are hot and going. I know both of us have hit the water this week and finally had a little success. So I was a little embarrassed with our uh, our efforts over the last couple of weeks. So finally, we have some, some fish to show for it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, just, um, I'm, you know, Lee, Lee's eager to get on the water and, and on the kayak and catch a smallmouth. I'm eager to get on cave run and catch a muskie. Right. Um, so, it's it's uh it's a great time of year whatever you want to you know whatever species you want to target so just finishing up you know we talked about this at the very onset um you know we're in our new license year so make sure you purchase that annual hunting or fishing license you can get that at our website at fw.ky.gov there under my profile um, you can also go to any of your sporting goods stores and pick that up but make sure you do that before you hit the water or when you hit the woods here coming up soon with those kiddos for turkeys. Uh, so some exciting stuff coming up uh, in the near future. You know, we covered a lot of material tonight. Most of this is all found on our website or our, our agency YouTube channels and Facebooks. Uh, so check that out. If you have some questions and you can't find those answers, you can reach out to our information center at 1-800-858-1549. And they can answer your questions. And if they're not able to, to get you to the subject expert uh, to better prepare you or to, or to inform you on the information you're looking for. 
So um, with that, thank you, Kevin. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Gabe. And, uh, you, know, on, you know, along with Gabe, I want to I thank everybody um, who chose to spend, you know, a little over an hour uh, yeah. with us this evening. We know you've got a lot of choices and, and uh, options, and uh, we're really honored that uh, you took the time out to, to join us and hope you uh, found it um, to your benefit and informational and uh, uh, hopefully it helps you have uh, better success on the water this uh, on this uh, this spring. Excuse me, you got tongue tied. Um, if you haven't done so already, we'd really appreciate it if you go ahead and hit the subscribe button at the top right corner of the YouTube YouTube page, and then select the bell and all to receive uh, notifications of new content from the Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. Um, this YouTube channel explore it. There's a ton of information, a ton of great um, information out, out there, and uh, um, it's all for you. So um, we will be back, and Gabe, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll be back, what, April 8th, and yep. uh, for a lot more discussion, I know you talked a little bit about turkey season, so mm -hmm. it's uh, that time of year coming up as well, uh, so turkey season, turkey hunting, and uh, we will see you then. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.